What is up, everybody? Welcome back to the NIU Dynasty. We are in week eight. We ended up landing a few recruits already, two of them being people that I was very, very high on. The first one being Mike Hurts, a four-star running back. The weird thing is nobody showed any interest in him, and we know he's not a bust. So I, I guess we just got on the train early and, you know, nobody really cared. I'm not sure, but I'm happy. We, we'll take a four-star anytime we can. We also landed Willie Strange, 6'4", 188 pound receiver right here in Chicago. And he is a four, a three star, but he has the gem. So we know he's gonna be good, or at least he should be better than a three star. Maybe like a four star with potentially better development. So I'm really excited to see what he has when we, when we can finally see what his development is. We also were able to flip Marcus Dobbs away from, I believe it was Central Michigan. No, it was Ball State. So Ball State jumped in late. They almost had the commit and then I went full bore with them, did a hard sell, and he ended up deciding to come here. So we now have our first defensive end. And then to round out the commits we have so far, is three-star Joseph Tony, 6'1", 184 pound corner. I did not scout this guy at all because it, it's just, we don't have the hours to waste on scouting. I, I If I couldn't scout them in preseason, I, I just didn't scout. You know, I, I just, it just didn't make any sense to me. But we, we were able to land them. We'll have some help at corner next year. I'm excited for that. And then we are still battling for quite a few other guys. Let's go. So we have our one and only four star already taken care of. We have quite a few three stars. Bryce Colley at left tackle. Mike Hall, another running back. I might. I haven't really scouted this guy because we were all in on Mike Hurt. And with Mike Hurt coming to town, I'm not sure if it makes sense for us to bring in another running back. Um, I mean, I'm going to leave my offer out there. And if he decides to come without much effort, hey, I'm fine with that. I'm not going to say no, but I'm not going to actively pursue him because we do have our sort of scat back or elusive back get in hurt already. Uh, we are going after Keenan Redman, a right guard, three star right guard. We are the only team right now showing any type of interest in him. So I'm hoping that can help us jump ahead of all the competition and land him early. Uh, we have another three star at corner, Diego Napolitano, I think it's Napolitano, 5'11", 194. He is, once again, only has interest from us. I'm not sure why. We haven't even had to do really any scouting. The most points I've had in him at one point was like 10, but I took that away to finish off. I think it was either Hurt or um, the defensive end. I can't remember, but regardless, once we get a few more of these commits, I think we'll be good to, to go back and, and fight out with the rest of the teams with some of these other guys. I did go ahead and finalize the 35. We were we had four positions available, so I went through not just our recommended, but sort of everything and found some teams that really have not had any interest in players. So Cam Yang is one, a left end, 6'4", 281. We have a three grade on pipeline, and we are number seven right now, but nobody has shown any interest. So what I'm hoping is I don't have the hours right now, but we will have the ability soon to offer him a scholarship and we'll, we'll probably do that next week after this advance because obviously I just don't have the hours right now and there's too many other players that I'm sort of fighting for that I, I don't want to take hours away from. So we're just going to hold off, hope that we get one more or two more commits. And then once we get those, we can use those points to add the last bit of scholarships to the guys I have added. So Cam Yang is one of them. I also found another receiver, Jason Nix, 6'4", 206. The only reason I added him was because we have a three tier on him. They were tied with every other school, but nobody has showed interest yet. We're not even on his board. So uh, same with Yang, I'm gonna leave him on the board. And then once we get to next week, if we have the points, I'm gonna offer them scholarships. But if a team comes through on the advance and ends up like having a bunch of influence, I probably won't. Cause there are a few other players I saw that I could add to the board, but I was trying to find guys that were not one stars. I wanted to find three and two stars at the bare minimum. I did try to find four stars. I just couldn't, there wasn't really many out there that didn't already have a bunch of competition for. Uh, I also found a two star defensive tackle, Lonnie Terrell, 6'3", 317, tier three pipeline. And that really puts us on tier with Northwestern who is the only other one that has a pipeline on them, but they haven't shown any interest yet. So I'm hoping that some of these guys just don't have interest shown. I can put some on next week with a scholarship and see if we can get ourselves up in the top eight before they make a decision. We might not even be able to, to get there, right? Because I just don't have 
the contract. You know what? Mm, I think I might have to, you know what? No, I, I changed my mind here. I changed my mind. I have got to get some points on some of these guys. I'm going to take the 10 from Obi again because the safety position really isn't a huge need for us right now. And then I'm going to spend those on scholarships for those other two players. I just thought about that while I was talking. So let's go back here. Let's add it to Terrell to see if that gets us at least into the top eight before his cutoff. And then did I do that with another player? I think I did. Oh, yeah. So it was Ben Proctor. Another another. Uh, but we're already here for the projected cutoff. So I'm going to leave that alone. Yeah. Projected cutoff here. So we're going to do a scholarship for Knicks as well. And now the two that I added. So now the two that are still on the board here, we're already inside the top eight for the projected cutoff. So I don't feel as, as I need to give him a scholarship. So that was my well, nothing with me is, is quick. You know, like I always say, I'm going to say this quick and then I talk for 10 minutes. Just how I am. I, I can't change it. But anyway, this was my quick recap of where we're at for recruiting. We are going to be without Andrew McElroy this week as he sustained a broken thumb last week in the sim. He is going to be out for the next two weeks which means we're going to get a chance to see more of Kyle Thomas and Jalen Johnson for playing time. All right, and we are underway now. Bacon under center. Here we go. Hand it off to Brown on the first play. He breaks off of one. He's got a lane. A no, another broken tackle, and he's out across the 40. What a way to open up this game. A big time run. And for those of you wondering why it always cuts straight to the game, it's because I have a team builder team, so they don't let me use the intro for NIU. So that's why. And oh, that time the defense was ready, though. And Brown's going to get dragged down for a loss of three. Another piece of information is Jake Gassaway, the, the young linebacker we have, is... Oh, what a big play! And it's Johnson! He won for the touchdown! Are you kidding me? Jalen Johnson, the sophomore. That was such a big play. Oh my God. Jalen Macon found him immediately. And Johnson making his presence known immediately. First action and he takes it the distance. Wow. What a turn of events on this opening drive. All right, so Toledo picked... Toledo punted twice, and we punted once, and now we're back here for our third drive after the touchdown. As Brown takes the handoff up the middle. The last drive we had, Brown had a one nice run, and then we ended up getting sacked, and we just couldn't recover after that. So we pick it up here, second and nine, make it over the middle. What a beautiful throw, and a great job by Kenji Lewis to change his, like, adjust his body to catch that pass because that was that was a tight window throw and a beautiful play from Lewis as he goes in motion he takes the handoff he's got a lane but oh my god 26 if Lewis takes a little bit wider of a of a line there he might be in the end zone right now celebrating but luckily for the, for Toledo they shut it down early and here goes another one this one to Johnson and he's going to get it down to the 22 we are rolling as an offense right now uh oh making just in time but an incredible job by the defenders 25 on the play superman diving to bat that ball down under center here single back set making back under pressure hit as he throws Toledo's been bringing some good pressure packages. That's why we had to punt the last drive. And you see it there, continuously getting into the backfield. Third and 10. Bacon shot right over the middle. Kyle Thomas. Oh, down at the one. Almost another touchdown. And look at that. With that pass, he's over 1,000 yards on the season. His face is gone from the camera for some reason. But Macon has been truly a blessing in disguise we at first thought it was going to be more of a controversy with him wanting to leave and now he has just taken over and has helped elevate this team 
as Brown takes it in off the direct snap, and we are going to go up 14 to nothing in the first quarter. What a difference between the last few games. All right, Toledo goes with the oh the read option or the RPO or whatever, and the quarterback ends up taking it for five yards. Another handoff. Oh my God. Jaden Dolphin is just so good off the edge. The second time he had a play like that uh, last drive for them, which ended up ending their drive. Oh, and there's a nice window throw as well from the quarterback. That was really, really nice. Another handoff, and that does not go too far. A gain of three. We wind towards the end of the first. And there's another handoff, and once again, Jaden Dolphin is in there, along with Furman. Both of them bring him down. Third and seven coming up for Toledo. They need something, though. That ended our first quarter. And look at that. Domination. Averaging 10. We're averaging a first down a play right now. It's been incredible. As Toledo comes back out on the field, that run puts them in a tough third down here. They have not been able to get a conversion today. They're looking for their first, and they're going to get it. A nice pass over the middle, a dig route. The number two gets them out into our territory at the 45. First time today they've crossed that 50-yard line. Let's see if they can keep this momentum up. Handoff, zero looking around. He bounces it back to the right side, unable to find any room. Another hand. Oh, no, it's a read option again, and there's nobody there. <laughs> Dude might not be very fast, but he had so much room. <laughs> Still able to get, like, 10 yards. First and 10 for Toledo. They'll go right back to it, and a nice gain of about five. Second and six. Toledo over the middle, and it is completed again down inside the 20. As they continue looking for their first points of the day, this has by far been the best drive for them. As, oh, right there, a beautiful throw, and it's a touchdown for Toledo. And we were not able to do anything with that last drive, so Toledo has the ball back again. As they try to do another read option, did not work. Back at an 11. Deep pass left side, wide open receiver down inside the 20 and forced out at the 15. A huge strike in Toledo just like that, looking to make it a game again. Defense caught off guard on a few big plays the last two drives. And that all that work is going to be out the window here shortly. And unless we get an interception, which we do, and it's Jaden Dolphin again. Doing it in the run game and now in the pass game. I am loving this dude. He has been making so many big plays for us, helping this defense stay relevant, even through the tough stretch that we had of games, and gets us our first interception. That was beautiful right there. And now we're going to pitch it out to Brown, and Brown... Only able to get three. They have that edge sealed pretty good. They're going to go right back to him. Man, got a couple of yards out of that, but Toledo's run defense has been actually pretty good so far today. There's only been like one or two plays where Brown was able to get loose. Outside of that, they've had him pretty much contained, and oh, man, there goes making down for the sack. Holt comes through and gets their second sack of the day. And here we go. A big time spin move. Wow. We had a very short punt. They had a good return. And now they are all the way down inside the 30 already. Wow. Toledo is trying to get back in this game. Another handoff going far outside of the left. But it is tracked down. 
very easily. Third and one. Oh my God, we were ready for that. What a stop by this defense. And we're gonna force a field goal. Oh, we call a timeout. Oh no, it's two minute warning. And it is up and it is good. Alito brings it within four. All right, 157 left in the first half. Last couple of drives, we haven't really been able to put anything together. Looking for a spark once again, and oh my god, it was almost the opposite. Macon throws a very dangerous late hitch route. Almost ends up going back the other way. Oh, big blitz, and we call a screen. What a perfect play to call for a blitz. And we'll get the first down. Man, if we called that to the other side, that might have been a 30-yard play, but I'll take it. First down, it's a good play. Making over the middle. Quick one to Johnson. He's got it. And another first. Have not had to use a timeout yet. A minute and a half to go. Round in motion. Making a quick strike to Thomas. And it is completed. Gain of nine. Love seeing Macon sort of move this ball around even without his number one receiver. And there goes Barnes getting involved finally. He had one catch earlier, but it resulted in a, a punt because it was short of the first. And Macon again. Oh no, that time he did throw a pick. Dang it. I feel like... 25 there made a really good play because he was running full steam ahead at the line of scrimmage and there was a receiver right behind him. I'm wondering if Macon, like, I don't know if Macon saw him or if he thought he was leaving the area, but either way, a pass that ends up just not going the way we intended. Oh, wow, he came up from behind him. So that was just a bad pass. You can't throw that. There was two defenders on him waiting for you to make that decision. And as soon as he did, they jumped it. And we jump it right back. Look at that. It's Bird. He's going to take it the distance. 10-5. Touchdown, Huskies. Pick six. That's what I'm talking about. Javon Bird. We've been missing interceptions all season, dropping them left and right. And today, we have caught two of them. And one of them now goes for points to extend our lead up to 11, heading into the halftime break. Alito looking for something here. Handoff and nothing. He'll get three. But after what we've seen in prior games, we will take that. <laughs> we will definitely take a three-yard gain over the 20, 30-yard runs we saw the last game. And there's another pass over the middle, and it is completed. First down. Going blitz here. We are. Safety blitz. We get home, but this time they're able to get rid of it on the screen. And he'll get a few yards of market for four. They have been going to that screen so often. And that's the first time they've actually been able to even connect on the pass. Hand off. Nice gap up the middle. And he'll get shut down just shy of the first down. Third and one. And this is a big down here for Toledo, I feel like. They ought to do something after the half break. And oh my god, what a play by guess who, Jaden Tolfin. Literal inches before the first down marker, and we're going to get the ball back on another punt. That is incredible. And we're going to take over at the 28-yard line. I'd like to see us start implementing some more runs here, but Macon has been having such a good time in the pass as he fires one out to Grayson Barnes for a first. I mean, just keep doing what we're doing. I just want to see some wins, man. I just want to see some big plays, see what these guys can do. Oh, a little screen to Johnson, and he'll get three. Blocks broke down early. Receivers just not able to hold and contain their, their guys. Macon now looking outside to Brown, and oh, big play there. 31 brings him down in the backfield for a loss of one, and now it's third and eight. 
I would like to see us push the ball down the field a little bit more there. As, uh oh, Macon's in trouble. Golly. I mean, we've seen Macon do this in prior games where he just runs backwards. We saw it in the last game before this one. And yes, he has had a good season statistically wise. But there are some situations like that where he just runs backwards and it's just like, dude, what are you doing? You know? And uh, in that situation, you, you got to throw the ball away. You know, you have to get rid of the ball. And you just, just didn't do it. I mean, it, it is what it is, but I just wish you didn't see it happening so much. Oh, we push him out. Almost get our first sack. Almost got home. We're still looking for the first. They got three on us already. Four now, actually, after that. And... Oh, my God, what a hit. It's Furman. Playing the boomstick on the receiver. And it's third and ten. They're handed off. That's a weird decision. All right, well, uh... All right. And Toledo. Going to punt it away once again as we... Oh my god, I thought we were going to get running into the kicker there. Okay. Gavin Williams unable to get much. And we'll come out at the 29. And we're going to go with a handoff to Brown. And he tries to set up that lane, but it closed up quickly. We'll only get one yard out of it. it I saw that opening he was going for, but it, like the line just didn't wasn't able to really secure it. And man, Brown getting tackled on first contact today a lot. Not something we don't normally see. Third and eight. Making back, fires, and oh, that was a horrible decision. Absolutely horrible decision there for Macon. You cannot throw that. You just can't. And... Yeah, they'll get it out to the 31 or 32 after the return. But, yeah, that you, you just can't throw that ball. I, there was two defenders in the area. You tried to, to slingshot it in there. That you were lucky that's not a pick six right now. And a nice stop up front by O'Malley. Second and 11. Luckily for us, defense still doing its job. And, oh, nice hit there. I believe that was Deshaun Prophet. Third and four. Playing a little bit too far off. I'm not liking this. I'd like us to get a little bit more closer to those receivers. Yeah, and that's exactly why right there. Those quick underneath routes on third and short are going to get us when we're playing five, six, seven, yard, eight yards off. And there goes a the handoff. Oh my God, what a hit. That was a big hit. Love to see it. Dude, they cannot do anything against us on the ground right now. That's insane. Third and nine, and, but they are killing us over the middle at times. Another completion, and that one once again to the tight end, Torres. And they are moving now. Closing in on field goal range. Oh my God. Poor dude got juked out of his shoes there. He went for the big hit, too. You saw it. He was trying to line it up, but dude was sick of getting hit like that. Oh, nice block down low. And my God, what an amazing play by number two to keep control of that ball, even though Bird was all over him. Oh, we send heat. We don't pick it up. And another nice completion. That hitch route ended the third quarter. So when we are coming up here on the, there's the top 25 rankings. I don't think we'll be sniffing them at all, ever. Not this season, at least. But that is going to put us into the fourth and final quarter. Toledo on the move here, trying to get back into this game. A touchdown here would put them back within four and make this fourth quarter much less stressful for them. All the time in the world, and he finds an open receiver on the sideline, down to the 10. If you, if you don't create pressure after four seconds like that, somebody is bound to get open. And there's the screen. They set that one up. They got a block. And he'll get six out of it. 
not a lot of room there, but it's better than getting sacked or, you know, forcing the incompletions for them. And that time, oh, I thought he was about to get in. Uh, Stewart, that's his name. Perfect. Now we know what the running back's name is. Jacquez Stewart. He has been getting beat up today. That time, almost taking it into the house. And this time, Stewart's going to take it in. Diving in for Toledo's second touchdown. Oh, they're going to go for two. I like this call. I mean, I don't because I'm obviously against them. But as a team, I can understand it. And they make it work. And now it's just a field goal in between a tie ball game for Toledo. Which means that we're going to have to come out here on offense and do something. We can't just think that our three touchdowns is going to hold us this lead. We've had such a good game so far today. we got to find that spark we had earlier. Because really, when you think about it, the last time we scored was in the first half, and that was an interception. As we start off with a horrible decision there on an end around to Kyle Thomas. Defense was ready for it. Second and 12. Come on, Macon. We need something here, man. Oh, man. I'm actually happy that dropped incomplete. That was going to be a loss of two more. Give them a, a second or two to get their routes done here, dude. There we go. Big time catch from Lewis. Taking the contact across the first down, keeping this drive alive for us. And there's another quick one to Lewis. And once again, there just wasn't enough bodies out there for blocks. It was two on one, not in our favor. And Johnson just could not keep the blocks down, which you can't really blame him. And man, they... It's like they knew that play was coming. That was insane. Wow. They are putting us in some tough spots on this drive. Making all the time in the world. Steps up in the pocket. He's going to run with it. But he's not going to have enough for the first. And we're going to have to hunt it away. That is a horrible way to finish that drive. Man. We really needed points on that one. Toledo is really starting to build up quite a bit of momentum. And now we have to hope that this defense steps up once again. Oh, quick outside pass and a nice play. Larry Stevens on the catch. Oh, we got a stack formation. Okay. They're going to go for the handoff, and we do not fall for it. Third and 11. Come on, defense. Shut it down. We send some heat, and that heat gets home. O'Malley gets us the first sack, and it comes at a very crucial part in this game. And now it's on Toledo. They're going to have to punt it, though. They're never going to go for this. That would be absolutely insane. Yeah. Punt this ball back to us. Hopefully, we can get some decent field position. And then, hopefully, we can also... Oh, my God, what a good punt. Oh, we got some space, though. Oh, cut that outside, man. He cuts that outside. He might have another 10 yards. Unfortunate. But, hey, we're at midfield. We have a golden opportunity here to put this game away. Play action. Roll out for Macon. Fires deep over the middle. And it is caught somehow by Kenji Lewis. I don't know how he hauled that in. Triple coverage. Contorting his body through the air, but somehow makes it work. First and 10 now for us, down at the 13. 4.40 to go and ticking. Pistol look for Macon. Hands it off to Brown, up the gut. And once again, Toledo ready for it. They saw the first few plays that this guy did, and then they said no more. They have been keeping people home all day to keep Brown in check. Macon takes the path, or takes the snap. Oh, he's under pressure again, and he's going to go down. Dang, man, we cannot keep having... These two negative plays after a good play. It just puts us in these tough spots. And now, once again, we're in a third and longer than 10 yards. It's been too many times today. Please don't tell me we're doing that. Oh, my God. Oh. Oh, nice moves. Okay. I still don't like that we went with that, but at least we're going to get uh, some yards. And we're going to have to settle for three, which means that Toledo can still, you know, they can essentially take the lead with a touchdown. 24 to 18, and now it's time on the defense once again. All right, here we go. Nine is in motion. We send pressure. It does not get home, and oh, what a beautiful play by Furman. It looked like the tight end caught it, but then he bat he bats it out of his hands. That was big. Second and 10. 
Stewart in motion. Underneath, and it's caught. It's Torres once again. Gleason, that's his name. Okay, I knew that. <laughs> so his name is Gleason. Third and three. He's back, looking deep. Back down, it's Bird again. And now though, at this point in the game, under two minutes to go, they have to go for this. So this right here could be the game. Takes a snap, fires left, and he's got it for the first. Had a chance there, but that flat route just opened up. Our, our defender just did not pursue quick enough. And oh my God, almost picked again. Bird has been playing out of his mind today. Second and 10, 148. Back under pressure and he goes down. And that right there is Session with another sack. Our second of the day. And it puts them at third and 14. They're going hurry up here. They want to keep them timeouts. They still have all three, as do we. Minute and a half now. Gets the call in. Here we go. Oh, almost sacked again. And we will cut them down short, fourth and five. And yes, they're going to go for it. They have to. Another opportunity for us to end this game, though. Gleason back under pressure and he goes down and that's the game. Session with the sack. And we are gonna finally break the streak of watching losses. No more just sim whims for this team. We got ourselves a win. It's Kevin Session back-to-back -back sacks in this fourth quarter for us to get the stops we needed. And we are finally gonna get our chance at a win. I'm so excited, man. Don't just, just don't screw this up here. We have this in the bag. Just, yeah, do your thing. Let them call their timeouts. All we gotta do is just, you know, run this clock down as much as we can, kick the field goal, put it above seven, and then we are golden. And Brown, try not to do too much extra, okay? Please stop. We don't need all that, okay? Just hold on to the ball. They're stacking that. They are stacking the middle of that, that line right there. Look at that. Oh, my God. We're throwing it. I don't like this at all. Yeah, stupid. What the hell are we doing? You've got to be kidding me. It was like the easiest win in the world. And now we're going to try this stupid long field goal. I swear to God, if we miss this, my all my, my positive momentum is going to be gone. Thank God he made it. Not sure why they're throwing it short, though. It should be trying to take the top off. But they decided against it on that one. Let's see if they change their mind here. Oh, Session almost got through there. Oh, another pick. It's Dolphin. Two picks for him. And Jaden Dolphin seals it. Jaden Dolphin for MVP, guys. My God, what a performance from him today. Sort of a nail-biter there at the end. But a very exciting game. I hope you guys stuck around to watch it. I mean, obviously, I, you didn't hear me say that if you didn't. But for those of you that did... Appreciate it. You also got a chance to see a really good game in the process as Jalen Macon has pretty much anointed himself as our quarterback for the rest of the season for sure. Jaden Dolphin, look at that. Five tackles. It doesn't show his two interceptions, but that's fine. And those tackles are big too. All right. Well, now it's time for us to go ahead and advance this week and see where our recruiting gets us after this advance. And then I'll see if I want to, you know, sim another week or just call it quits there. I'm not sure yet. I'm still trying to figure out how to work this, you know, this whole dynasty thing. You know, the recruiting thing is a very different process than with franchise. And we'll, look at that. Another player of the week for Kevin Session. I feel like he had a monster game. Six tackles for loss. He was making waves in the backfield for our, the run defense. But I feel like Dolphin had a bigger, a big impact as well. But I'm happy just to see that we're getting these players of the week because... We deserve it, right? Oh, and he got National Player of the Week as well. So not just conference, but national. That's big. And we have one of our rivalry games, Ball State. They've been my rival in this gosh darn recruiting train as well. Let's check out and see what's going on with our recruits right now. We're good there, but oh my God, all of a sudden Central Michigan is putting in work on him. Um, oh, we made a good jump for Raymer. Okay, we jumped very far out ahead of Bowling Green. We somehow went down in playing style. This is all because of rushing, right? Like, we're winning games, guys. Like, 
I understand to, to some degree that the playing style should be a factor, but like, I feel like it has to become within reason, right? Like, of course, we're not going to have a bunch of, of running when we are, you know, um, when, when we're having shootouts. So I, I don't know. I mean, I'm not, I'm not assuming he's going to come. I'm just, I'm leaving my offer out there because nobody else is offering him. And he literally only has us down here because of a, of a deal breaker. Like, it's just so stupid. And now we are like dead even with Central Michigan. Um, we're getting close to the, their visit though. So like, I feel like if we don't get him committed soon, we're not going to be able to land him. I have 60 on Sneed and I'm still getting outplayed by, by uh, Northwestern which sucks i have a i think i should just bow down at this point i mean i've maxed him out i i mean that other five hours is not going to change from this you know what i mean we sent the house we did the scholarship the only thing i can think of is if i rescind send the house and then do a hard sell on him see if that, that can sway his opinion the only problem is we have an a a c minus and a d plus which means we're not going to get a lot of points out of that I just, I just don't know if it's worth that. If, if we, I mean, this is sort of our last ditch effort though. Like, I feel like we're already getting outplayed by, by Northwestern. So, I mean, if I, if I can't get the sell here on the hard sell, I, I mean, obviously sending the house is not working enough because Northwestern just came in out of nowhere. So I'm just going to go for the hard sell. This is a, sort of the Hail Mary. If it don't work, it don't work. Okay. We jumped out ahead for shilling. That's big. Um, I should really add some more points to him. And oh my God, Marquise Baxter, all of a sudden Boston College wants in. And I don't think we're going to win against Boston College. So we're going to go ahead and we're just going to, we are going to, you know, bow out, move this, get those points back. Oh, shoot. Can you just leave us alone? So now Indiana has all of a sudden entered the fray. They don't beat us in pipeline, but they are definitely going to beat us in, in, like their tier because i mean <laughs> I, we're not gonna be able to compete with indiana i don't think that sucks i can try to send the house on them and now maryland we're getting outplayed by both maryland and indiana they have a scheduled visit they jumped from out of nowhere Ah, man, I just don't know if it's worth the, the funds. You know what I mean? Especially on a two star. Is it worth those 25 hours or can I allocate them somewhere else? Um, I think we're just going to bow out at this point. I could use the hours for other players that we have a better chance on. Um, like maybe get something on Yang right away. See if we can move the needle. We're at seventh here. But he's going to probably want to drop down to top five here soon. Um... So we're going to go here and I'm going to do contact friends and family. I think this would be good for us to get an addition here on Terrell to see if we can get any movement. We're going to do 10 on him. I wish I could scout more, but like, I just don't have the hours to actually scout. You know what I mean? So I think I'm just going to leave this sit as is. We're already in number one for shilling. I want to get some points on Singleton though as well. So let's go and do another 10 and then... Do I have a good hard sell for him? Let's see. Man, we have a D plus, a C minus, and an A. He doesn't have a deal breaker for close to home. So essentially he's saying he doesn't need to stay home. And really, Indiana's not far away to where it's a it's a big like holy crap, we could actually make him stay here because we're close to his home. Alright, so what I'm doing is last last um video, I talked to you guys about uh Jack plays CFB, the guy who does like the breakdown of like the, the science behind it. And what he does is he uses a tiered system with numbers. So A plus, there's 13 different options for your grades. 13 being the best, one being the worst with F, and everything in between has its own number grade. And what he says in the video, if you guys didn't check it out, is if you have 19 or more points between what you have available, it's worth doing it over Ascend the House. So if we have this one here with Asher, we have an A in proximity home, which gives us 12. We have a C minus with coach prestige, which gives us five, which puts us at 17. And then we have D plus for academic prestige, which puts us at four, which should be enough to be above 19. Obviously it is. And then which would make sense to do over send the house. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to run the student of the game and see if this works. 
Um, we need corners. Is there anybody else in the corners world that I could I could target here? Dylan doesn't have any offers. Neither does Antoine Burns. I'd like to find another big-bodied guy if I can. Somebody who's above six foot. Major butt. Are you f kidding me? This dude's name is Major Butt. Major Butt is getting recruited. What in the world is happening here with CFB 25, guys? This is not funny. And I was going to sim past this game, but I feel like with it being a rivalry matchup, I have to play this one. So we're going to call it there. Pretty good video, another long one. Let me know what you guys think of how I'm doing these videos. If you guys would like me to structure them a little bit differently, I'm just not sure how to really work this whole recruiting thing. I'm getting so wrapped up in the recruiting that like I'm finding myself wanting to sim weeks because I want to see how this process plays out, but I also don't want to ruin the experience. So I'm going to hold off. I'm probably gonna start recording another video right now <laughs> after this one because I'm excited, but I appreciate you guys so much for watching. Before you leave, hit that like button. Subscribe if you have not already, and turn on that bell notification. I will see you guys next time.